Hello everyone, in this tutorial I'll be explaining how to go from sheet music to these awesome Synthesia tutorials you see online. The software I'll be using in today's video is MuseScore, Piano VFX, and Clipsham. The first thing I'll be showing is how to set up your sheet music and how to get good audio from MuseScore, because the bass audio sounds pretty bad. First thing you'll want to do is search up MuseScore 3 in your search engine and scroll down to Downloads. All of the links will be in the description as well. From here, you can download the Windows version and begin with the initial setup. Once you've downloaded it, the first thing you'll likely see is this. The thing you'll want to do is press Create New Score and title it whatever you want. You can add a composer or whatever subtitles you want and it'll show up in the score itself. And you'll click Next. Now there are hundreds of instruments in New Score that you can choose from. So what you want to do is click Choose Instrument. This will allow you to have more than one as well as separate volume control of each individual part. After clicking next, you'll want to go to keyboards if you're looking for a piano and add two of them to the score. The top piano will be your treble clef or your right hand, and the bottom piano will be your bass clef or your left hand. What you'll want to do is delete the bass clef from the top piano and the treble clef from the bottom piano, and then click next. Add a key signature if you'd like, press next, change the time signature if you'd like, and press finish. Now you can see the initial settings I put in are here, as well as the two pianos. The reason I have two separate pianos is so that I can control which part has which volume. If you'd like me to make a tutorial on how to make really cool sheet music and music score, just let me know and I'd be more than happy to make one. Now let's say that you've finished composing your piece. You might notice that these two pianos say Piano 1 and Piano 2, which is traditionally not the case. What you can do to fix this is to left then right click on either staff and select staff slash part properties. In this menu, you can delete both of these names and press apply, and then do the same for the other staff. Now you'll see that there are no instrument names. Now to specify that this is a piano, you can go to add up top, go to text, and then part name, and type in piano. And if you'd like it to be here, you can simply drag it there. Now we're going to focus on the sound of the music. MuseScore's basic font is okay, but it's not great. You can select the sound of your instrument by going to View, and then Mixer, where this menu will pop up. Here's the treble and bass part from the pianos that we added, as well as the sound that each one has. Now there are a bunch of different presets that MuseScore has to offer, though they don't sound that great. There are many great piano sounds on the internet, though personally I like one called Doormark's Model B. I have a link in the description to the download of the sound font, but also the search. From here, you could scroll down to test out all the sounds of the different pianos, or you could scroll down even further to the piano-only sets. These downloads are the sound font files that you will put directly into MuseScore. For this example, I'll use Doormark's Model B, the one I already have, and press download. Once it's downloaded, you can drag this over to MuseScore and let go, in which it'll say install sound font. You can then install the sound font, and it'll say sound font install. Going to view and then synthesizer, you will see this menu right here. I already have two other ones installed, including door marks, but if you don't see it here already, you could press add and then sound font file and press load. Changing the order of these sound fonts will adjust where it is in this menu. MuseScore General has hundreds of instruments, so I'd recommend putting this sound font at the top unless you tend to use MuseScore instruments. After you've added the sound font file, you can go to sound, and depending on where you put the sound font file, you can select which sound you want. This particular sound font file has four different options. Normally I pick dynamic since it has a lot more dynamic range, but you can test which one you like the most. Also make sure to do it for the other piano as well. And once you do, you'll find that the music sounds a whole lot better. Again, you can test out tons of different sound fonts on the internet, but personally I like this one for general use. For this specific song, I have this one right here which I will also link a download in the description. Once you've found the sound font that best suits your song, you can play it back and see how it sounds. The software I'll be using for the VFX is called Piano VFX, which you can find in the description or just by typing Piano VFX into your browser. From here, you can select Piano VFX and you will see the download page. From here, you can select Download Now and Piano VFX Basic. The liquid one has not come out yet, but this one is amazing and it is free. After clicking download, you can see a bunch of different options, examples, and system requirements. After clicking the download button, 
you can wait for it to download and install the program. After downloading, you can extract the zip folder to wherever you want on your computer. I just created a new folder in my documents called Vienna VFX. After extracting it to that folder, you can then copy the file path, go back to the zip folder, press extract all, and paste the file path. After it's finished, you can see the folder along with its contents. This is the application itself, so I would recommend making a shortcut or pinning it to your taskbar. You can then drag the shortcut to your desktop or wherever you want to see it. After clicking the application, it will start to load. This is the screen you'll see when it opens, and although there are a lot of things going on, you'll only need to know a few things. The first thing you'll need to do is set up your effects by clicking the effects button right here. Now there's a lot of options on the screen, so I'll quickly go over the ones I use the most. First of all, the media button is the back button. It confused me for way too long. Now the top left button up here is the type of particle that is around your note. So you can have tons of different particle presets, or if you really wanted to, you can go into the effect maker and make your own, though it gets pretty complicated. After choosing your desired effect, you can go down here and mess with these options. First of which is keyboard sync. This is the effect between the piano and the note. There's four sliders, which adjust the RGB values, as well as the brightness. For now, I'm just gonna set it to white. You can then adjust the color of the background. You can then choose to reverse the animation or have a transition between the top and bottom colors of the video, with these sliders representing the initial color of the title. I usually leave this off. The next option is MIDI info, which will show via text whether the sustain pedal is on and how many notes have been played. I also usually leave this off. The next option is the texture, Right now I have noise selected that you can have any type of texture you want for your note. I personally use the noise texture, though you can go with any type of texture you'd like, even custom ones, which you can make via this texture maker here. The next setting is the actual color of the tile. Adjusting these sliders will adjust the RGB value, and here is the brightness. The next setting is key brightness, which adjusts the actual brightness of the keys. Now the applied color profile section is where you can adjust the individual color and brightness of both the treble and the bass's tile and particle color. This color profile is added on top of the already existing color, so I recommend setting it to just white if you're going to have more than one color. Now the first thing you want to do is click new color profile. The first four settings are the tile color itself, so you can adjust these RGB values as well as the brightness of the key. This will also change the key color at the bottom, so be aware of that. You can set this to whatever you like, but for now, I'll just do something like this. Now, the FX color 1 and 2 are the two types of particles. The first one, you could see here, and the second, you can see here. These effects will be different depending on which particle effect you selected. So, say if I had fire, that would be vastly different setting. For now, I'll go with particles similar to the one I already chose something like that and then you want to hold the right click and drag it over to the number one the first one will be your treble part and the second one will be your bass part so adding another color profile and also adjusting the color you can drag this over to the number two and this will be your bass part if you have more instruments in your sheet music you can add these and we'll just go down the list now that we're done with effects we can go back to the media tab and import our music. What you'll want to do is go back to MuseScore, go to File, Export, and Export To, and you'll want to export this as a MIDI file. This file exports the instructions for how to play the music. You'll then go back to Piano VFX, click on this top music button right here, and select your MIDI file. This will tell the application how to play the notes. You'll then want to go to the edit tab where you can see your music play in real time. Now, at first you'll realize this sounds horrible and it does, but we will fix that in just a little bit. The first thing we're gonna do in this menu is go to post effect. You can adjust the exposure, contrast, or saturation. You can also add text saying whatever you like, such as the composer's name, and it'll show up wherever you position it. I would recommend putting it in the top right as it's out of the way. If you'd like a different font, you can delete this text and add it in the editing software, which is the third part of this tutorial. Next, we'll go to the MIDI tab, which is where you'll see the fog, hit effect, and virtual lights. The fog is pretty cool, and I usually use it in my Synthesia videos, but you can do whatever you like. The next option is hit effect, which are these particles right here. 
If I disable it, you can see that it no longer has these particles. It can make it easier to see the notes exactly when they come down, though it doesn't look as near as good. The last setting in this menu is virtual light. If I let it play and then pause, you can see a light right here that kind of flickers. This is the virtual light. You can adjust the Y position of this light. You can adjust the intensity, the size, and the MIDI Y, which you can see right here. The speed value affects the speed of the entire song. You can play around with all these values to figure out which one you like best, though these settings make sure that the virtual light goes over this key, which adds a nice glow effect when the note hits. The next setting is image. Now for this one, I'm going to press escape to go back to the main menu and select an image file. After you've selected your image file, you can go back to edit. After pressing use image file, you can see the image appear. You can adjust the size, rotation, and position of this image, as well as the opacity. After getting it to the right size and opacity, you can then play it to see what it looks like. You can use this image file for anything from your logo to just cool things you found online. Next setting is video. You can use any video. Oh gosh, okay. The next setting is video, which seems to be broken for me, <laughs> so I've never used it. The final setting in the edit tab is audio. You can use an audio file and sync it with these settings right here. I personally choose to attach it in the editing software as it's a lot easier. After pressing escape to go back to the main menu, you can press renderer. Here you can see all the settings for your video, such as the FPS, the resolution, the quality, and how you'd like to render it. Since we use a MIDI file, I do MIDI based rendering. You then want to select the file path and then press render. Quality such as 4K and 60fps will take a long time depending on your computer, as you can see here. <laughs> so be prepared to wait 15 to 20 minutes for it to be finished. After it's finished, you could see the video in your folder. You could see here that it has no audio, so now we can finally fix that. To add audio, text, or any other effects you would like, you can then go to your browser and type in Clipchamp. This is a completely free and easy to use video editor that you can attach the audio or other effects to. You can create an account and then you will see this screen right here. I just select whatever and then press create a new video. From here you can drag and drop the video and the audio file. To get the audio file, you can go back to Muse Score, go to File in the top left, Export, Export to, and then WAV Audio since it is the highest quality. You can then press export and wait for it to finish. After it's finished, you can then drag both the MP4 and WAV file into Clipchamp. You can then drag the video and the audio onto the timeline and adjust the timing, which is very important. Zooming in all the way, you can see that the audio is not synced up with the video. To fix this, you can drag the playhead over to where you first see the notes appear on the keyboard. Now drag the audio file over to that position. This makes sure that the audio starts when the keys are being hit. Now you can see that there's a four second gap between when the video starts and when the audio starts playing. So I recommend cutting at least half of that off so that the viewers aren't waiting forever. You can do this by dragging the playhead over to where you want to cut the video, pressing cut, selecting that first part, pressing delete, and then delete this gap. All of this will make sure the video starts on time and in sync. You can also do this for the end of the video. Next, you can add text if you'd like, whichever font, add your name, resize it, and put it wherever you like. Just ensure that the text spans the entire length of the video. The last thing we're going to do before we export it is add a fade in and fade out. If you select the video and the text, you can then go to fade, add a fade in and fade out. Pressing play, you can see how it works. You can also see that it works for the end of the video. The web file extends a little beyond the video. I'll cut it right here to make sure the audio doesn't last longer than the video. After pressing delete, it is now completely finished and you can then export it for free. One caveat of using Clipchamp is that you can only export it in 1080p without paying. I get around this by using Filmora for my editing software, although Clipchamp is a free alternative, which is a whole lot better than paying a stupid amount of money every month. You can then title your video whatever you'd like, press export and choose whichever quality setting you'd like. It'll then export your video and it will be saved to your computer. After it's finished downloading, you can open your video and play it. You can see that it worked all the way through, all the way to the very end where it fades out. Like I said before, all the links are in the description. 
If you have any question or comments, please leave them down below. I'd be more than happy to answer. And if you'd like me to make a tutorial on MuseScore itself, how the program works, and how to write cheat music, let me know down in the comments and I'll definitely consider it. The video that I rendered in today's video will be going out in a couple of days, so stay tuned for that. I also do a lot of gaming content on my main channel if you'd like to see that. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and I will see y'all next time.